Travis Peters, welcome to the Golden Mic. My approach is I get with God on everything. That's what I'm rooted in. Well, that's Travis right there. When you know Jesus, like, it's just different. The Bible says do not live in fear. I don't think there's been one time in the last 18 months where I've, like, genuinely been like, like, seriously, no. that's winning. I thought money was going to do that for me. I thought fame was going to do that for me. I thought success was going to do that for me. I thought something else was going to do it. And I was like, nope, just believe in Jesus. That's it. Your faith, your trust, your confidence is what actually gets you the result. We are deployed down here with missions and assignments and reasons and purposes. There's something for each of us to do. And when you start doing it, it's the greatest life imaginable. When you just say yes to it, doors start to open. Ideas start to come. Opportunities start to take shape. Clarity gets there. Start making moves. You start doing stuff. You enter a room with no exits. You could have all the exits, and I wouldn't take any. What are you going to do? Take my money? Hurt me? Persecute me? Criticize me? Like, don't understand what I have. And not because of me, because of him. I'm just encouraging anybody to take that stance on whatever they're facing, whatever decision. is like, let's just do it with God. You obey the voice of the Lord. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. Travis Peters, welcome to the Golden Mic, and uh, welcome to round two. Yeah, she should, should we tell them what happened? Yes, absolutely. Well, of course, we have to tell them what happened. It's a great story, right? Uh, we have started our, our podcast episode here, and uh, Travis here was on a roll. Tell pouring my heart out. Just Travis, pouring my heart really out. really was. Heart really, on the it was, table. It was great. It was good. And uh, I looked down, and I had forgot to hit record on the audio. So thankfully, eight minutes in, uh, and not an hour in, but uh, yes. we're going to restart. But like that story was so good. I want you to, I want you to, I want, I want to bring that back. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with the the first question. Though. I do want to go back to the beginning with it, which was, how was your travels down here? Yes. Travels were great for me. Yeah. Flew in from Tulsa. Yeah. Uh, I got word about an hour after we'd flown out, a bunch of the security systems in Tulsa got shut down. Crazy. And so the line got backed up all the way around the terminal. I guess it was on the headline news about just how long these lines were. Yeah. And it was causing mess ups all across the country. People were missing all kinds of connecting flights and all kinds of things. So, but you made it out. Praise the Lord, made it out. Amazing. And uh, I got stuck in customs for uh, they black they bribed me or they blackmail. I don't know what the word is. Extorted. There, there we go. Maybe. I like that one. They they took my money because I brought in uh, all the uh, the podcast equipment and stuff. Um, and so, but we both made it down here and we're good. Yes, we're here. Heads. We're here. Uh, Tim Shields. I watched his presentation today. Fantastic. Have you watched many of the presentations? Uh, most of them. Most of them. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday I did a, a family day with my wife and daughter cause they're here. And so I didn't like nothing yesterday. Okay. Um, but, uh, today we were back into a podcast and stuff, but I caught his and that was just, it's so good. So good. So, um, I want to go into your background tell us a little bit about who you are, but I actually want to preface this by one of the things you mentioned in the first go around was. God was good and, you know, faith, you were favored. You're a Christian, believer in Jesus? Very much so. Very much so? Yes. Uh, give me the 30 second, uh, like, how, how, what, where, where does faith play a role in what you do here? Like, how, how, how deep can we go on, on God and geek out on Jesus? It's actually all I talk about. Okay. So, like, on my YouTube channel and podcast and everything I do, it's, it is what I talk about. Okay. Like, I, I teach people how to understand and apply God's word. So they can be successful in every area of life. Ooh, this is going to be fun. All right. So we talk, all you want to talk about. Well, I, so I have questions on that. So, but I want to, I'm going to back up the conversation. I'm going to turn it over to you and say, all right, fill us in who you are. You and I met back in April at Inner Circle. We had a brief cumber, 20 minute, maybe 20 minute over, over yeah. lunch. And I was like, you seem cool. And then when we had the opportunity to get you on, I was like, yes. So fill us in a little bit about your background and how you got here now. Um, and we'll pick up the conversation there. Yeah, uh, I've I remember, man. It just depends on how far back you want to go. Um, I'm gonna so even born take it. Born and raised in Oklahoma. Born in oh, no, born, born in Honolulu. Honolulu. Raised in Oklahoma. Um, I I feel like everything started changing for me when I was about 15. That's okay. when I started going to church. Okay, and that's when I started getting around people who are doing great things. I came from an awesome family, uh, loving parents. Yep. Phenomenal childhood, to be honest with you. Do you have siblings? I have a brother. brother. I've got two half brothers yeah, and I good. live with or lived with one. Okay, yeah. Cool. Raised with one. And uh, man, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got married in 2010. Um, and right before then was when I was like, we didn't mention this earlier, but I'd read Rich Dad, Poor Dad mm. when I was about 15 or 16. That's crazy. That was my first like book of like, whoa. Dude. Yeah, me too. Right. Then I read the four hour work week when I probably a year before I got married. So I was about 25. Okay. And that book has some frameworks in it that 
I still use to this day. Yeah. That is an, yeah, like, Tim Ferriss for sure. the second kind of milestone book yeah. that got me realizing like, yeah, let's do business stuff. Yeah. Let's make this a part of what we do. Yep. Um, fast forward, I started a first venture. It's an ice cream truck. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I started an ice cream truck. Okay. Well, you were married at this point or no? So I bought the truck right before I got married. Okay. And then right when I got married, I fixed it up. And started running it. Okay. All right. It wasn't a failure, <laughs> but it wasn't great either. Got it. Um, it, 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 uh, it was a ton of fun. Um, my mess up was I bought a 1975 ambulance, which okay. seems cool. Yeah. And we called it Dr. Delicious. Oh, my. Except there's a 1975 ambulance, yeah. so it broke down all the time. Uh, oh. So I was making money yeah. and just going right back in. Yeah. Making money, yeah. break down. Making money, break down. Hired a guy, he drove it, break down. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. So I got some gigs. We did some uh, corporate events and did some fun stuff like that. Yeah. And then I sold it. Okay. And just kind of got out of it. Got it. But that was my first, like. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah I did, I did yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying stuff, yeah, you know. Cool. Um, How old are you at the time? 26. 26. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. Um, I would, I've, I've done the, uh, lawn mowing business a couple times yep. when I was 19. Yeah. And yeah. then I did again when I was like 21. Yeah. I didn't think of it as entrepreneurial, to be honest. Yeah. Right. I was legit. Like I had my dad's truck, my dad's lawnmower, yep. my dad's weed eater, and then a buddy. And we would go drive around to rich people neighborhoods yep. where the grass was high. Yep. And we would knock on doors. Oh, that's cool. And I, it, I, looking back on it, it's like, it's kind of like, I used to do that. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, I, I, I used to sell bread door to door. So yeah. yeah craziness. Dude. Yeah. I, I didn't think about it like an, being an entrepreneur yeah. didn't have any of that stuff. It was just like, how can I make some extra money? Yep. And that's where it starts. So did those things. Uh, we were talking about this earlier and I, I do want to tell the story yeah, again because good, yeah. it was, I think a lot of us have these milestone moments, right? Yeah. So I got married in 2010, started working in insurance. Yeah. And I remember there was a moment, it was, it was actually probably 2013 when there was a snowstorm, 2012, 2013, there's a snowstorm in Oklahoma. It's rare, happens every couple of years. Yeah. We, I'm, I'm still newly wed ish at this time. And first time we were snowed in together, didn't have kids yet. It was getting cozy. Yeah. Fireplace was going, <laughs> the whole city was shut down. Yeah. Okay. Ain't nobody going anywhere. It's about to be a great day. Yeah. All right. I, I fully assumed, like I had no doubt that the insurance company I worked for would have been closed that day. Yeah. Because it, literally every, it was like the news it was like the whole city is shut down. Yeah. Can't even leave driveways. My boss calls me and said, hey man, you're coming in, right? And I'm like, it, he was a friend of mine, but I was like, I, I, I didn't plan on it. I was yeah. like, the whole city is shut down. I was like, Man, I, re I really want you and, and one, of, one of the other guys to come in uh, just because I want to like capitalize on it. I don't want to miss out on any money yeah. and stuff like that. And I was like, I, but the whole city is shut down. Like no one's even going to come out. I think some people, he's like, I think some people will come out. I was like, well, dude, I can't even leave my driveway. Like legit, my car is snowed in the garage. Yeah. He's like, hey, no worries. My brother has a Hummer. I'll send him to come pick you up. <laughs> oh yeah. And I remember being like, <laughs> my face, I was just like, Bro, I'm newly married ish. <laughs> no, I was like, he, he wasn't married at the time. I was like, you don't get it, bro. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so hung up. His brother comes, scoops me up. We go in. Oh, you did go in? I what? went in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, he came by and got me. And uh, left my, my new wife at home just to be snowed in by herself in front of the fireplace. And uh, so we get there and there, there was not, it was not worth coming in for. Yeah. Um, nothing happened that day. And it was like that milestone moment on the inside where I was like, all right, I'm getting out of my day job. Yeah. Like putting my foot down. Yeah. Figuring it out. Let's go. Yeah. I think, and I think we all have those moments. And I think that that's a, uh, I mean, obviously nobody has that exact story, but they, we, we all can relate to that. Right. You probably have something of that catalyst, yeah. that moment. Yep. Of like, I ain't doing this. Where you're like, yeah. So mine was a little different than that in, it, or a similar concept where I, so I worked night shift at a granary. Uh, cause I was trying to get a farming business off the ground at the time. And so I would go in. Where are you from? Um, whew, all over. So born in Wisconsin and then at age one, we moved to suburbs of LA and then lived there from age 10 or one to age 11 and then moved across the country in an RV to a farm in Indiana. 
And this is where that story is at. Okay. So, some drastic lifestyles. Very much. Very drastic. Yes. Thankfully, like at age 11, you don't remember much of your childhood before that. So like we, I didn't have a lot of like friends or anything that we left in California per se. My older brother okay. did, but I didn't. So most of my adult or my you know high school life and teenage years or whatever, that was all in Indiana. The formative years. Yes. Yeah, yes. Much, very much so. So I graduated high school and I was um, working at a granary. And so I worked night shift making animal feed, right? So literally like, like cows for cows and goats and you know stuff like that. And it was Indiana winter, right? So like freezing cold, it's like negative 20 degrees with wind chill, literally. And at the very, very, very top of, it's like five stories up, there's like the head to where you turn where the grain's gonna go and there's just gravity fed down. So it augers up and then goes in. That got clogged. Now keep in mind, this was not, OSHA compliant. I'm like a 19 year old kid and I'm by there by myself, right? Like running this whole like thing. What time is it? It's, it's like three in the morning, right? Three in the morning, yeah, 19. Negative 20 degrees outside, right? With wind chill or whatever. And the only way to get up there is to climb a single rung ladder, right? Up there. It's like pitch black, middle of the night. So I had to go all the way up there. And then when I put my hand up on like, like the top to get on, the lid was up and it came down to this. And so my hand started bleeding. And it was like, it was just that moment where you're just like, like what, what, am I, I, what am I doing? Like, what am I, like I, I knew I wanted out anyway. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I had some words with my boss. We ended up parting ways. Uh, I did go back and apologize, uh, for, for blowing up a little bit, but, uh, that was my moment of like for eight, for $12 an hour or whatever it was, but you know, back then. And I thought I was like, okay, cool. This is good. No. So I can relate a little bit. So how old are you now? I just turned 30. Okay. Just turned 30, have, uh, married and had, uh, we had our first daughter six months ago. So we have a six month old. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long have you been married? Three years. We just celebrated our third wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah. What was the date? May 20th. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Just, just not even a month ago. Yeah. Okay. Was it? Yeah. So, and I you're married? Married for, we just had our 14th year anniversary, June 5th. And then I'm 40. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you got married at 25? 26. 26. I got married. 20. I got married at 26 too. Dang. We have a lot of similarities. Look at that. When you okay, you got married at twenty six. Did you feel old or feel young to get married? Um, right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like it was the right time. I, I grew up. I grew up around a lot of. I grew up in a very conservative thing, so a lot of people get married at eighteen, nineteen. Okay. Yeah, and that was too young for me. That's yeah. that's even a little more. That's more country than than Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right? Yeah, yeah it, it, we were pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah there was some. Yeah. Well, but, we were talking. It's funny. We got married. At, I was twenty six. She was twenty five, and we felt. It, at the time, it felt like, man, we we're kind of like late to the game. Really? Like we figured it out though, mm. right? Yeah. Um, but now, now it seems young. Really? I think, I think so? so. I think I think 26 is pretty young. It just seems like a lot of people are getting married older now. Yeah, I would say I think a lot of people probably are getting married older, but I don't necessarily think that, I don't know, I don't know if it's good or, good or bad. Good or bad's a bad label. Yeah. Yeah, right. But for us, it was the concept of, for me, I, I grew up, I grew up without needing anything. Like I, we weren't homeless or, you know, never, we had everything that we needed roof over our heads, but I grew up not with financial stability or security or, uh, or scarcity in financial scarcity, right? Where every decision was due to lack of money. And so for me, being financially stable was like, I wasn't going to get married until that happened. Right. Yeah. And so when I met my wife, I was on the journey of that. And, um, she was like, it's funny when we first met, she was like, Nope, can't date anybody because I'm I'm getting out of this town. And I'm like, sweet, I work on the internet. Where are we going? Right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, but we were we've been together for almost six years now. Um, uh, we're dating and then you know engaged and then uh, married. So yeah. that's awesome. What's yeah. your daughter's name? Daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. Willow. Yeah. Willow. That's great. Cutest. I mean, we lucked out. I mean, I, honestly, I'm like, I did this much work and get like this this much work, so <laughs> it worked out. But uh, anyway, back to back to I want to pick up where you left off with it. Yes. So you you've had you had that moment. Where'd you go from there to get into to entrepreneurship? Yeah. So put my foot down. Let's figure this thing out. Yeah. So my approach is I get with God on everything. I'm like, God, want out the day job. What are we doing? Were you, What's were the you plan? born and raised in like, or were you, were you raised in the church? No. No. Okay. I started going when I was about 15. When you're about 15. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's what you said. Yeah. And, uh, with friends hmm. and, uh, entire trajectory changed yeah. obviously for the better. Yeah. And yeah, so that, that's how I operate. Is like what age? Because I do think this is an important setup for. I'm going to keep referencing back to this because uh, ask at, away. What, at what age did you become saved? Like give me your life, Christ. So, uh, funny story, but I remember somebody praying a second grader praying with me when I was in kindergarten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And I've looked back on that time and I was like, 
I think it was then. I remember in kindergarten talking to God. Yeah. Praying. My parents didn't teach me. Yeah. Didn't go in church. Yeah. I just, from that point forward, I was like, I just knew. Yeah. And I've been talking to him ever since. But when I was 15 and started going to church, I started to get a little more serious yeah. and understand some things yeah. and be like, probably should check out this Bible. Probably start reading some yeah. stuff. Probably start learning some stuff. Yeah. Right. Started getting around some really cool people. Um, and then when I was 19, I started going to the, the church I'm still in and planted in today. And my pastor is just an amazing general of the faith, just an amazing man of God. So I've learned so much from him. And then the people that have, you know, kind of in that circle. So, I mean, it taught me how to be a man of God, how to be a husband, how to be a leader, how to go for big things, not play small, how to trust God, how to read and understand the Bible, apply the principles it teaches that bring about success in our yeah. lives. And so that's what I'm rooted in. I love it. So that's Travis right there. Okay. And so everything stems from that. Amazing. Okay. That place. And you said around that 15, 16 is when it started to get serious and it's been a progression ever since then. Yeah. Okay. Um, real quickly, because since we're going to talk about God as much as we are, and this, I'm so excited for the rest of this, we might go long, um, is I grew up in a relatively conservative church. It's funny, actually today I, I interviewed my mom and the episode dropped today. We talked for two hours about my childhood and how I yeah, we was taught and all that. But I grew up for the ages that I can remember in a pretty conservative church. My parents were trying to do everything right. If that makes sense. Right. And a little bit more legalistic is a little heavy, but seemingly right. Um, and then when I got when I graduated high school, I was out. I was like, God, I don't, I don't not believe in you, but I don't have time because I got to go make money because also I'm poor and I need money. So there was a long stretch, probably three or four years there where God was not a part of my life. Like I acknowledged him, but that was about it. And then 18 months ago is when I recommitted. I mean, like fully like 100, 180 degree, like Jesus is King and like recommitted life to everything to him. And I will tell you, the last 18 months have been the crazy. I mean, like in the best way possible, like the craziest 18 months of my life, right? Um, and so it's interesting to hear, you know, people that have been in it for their whole life, people that have been short, people that have been long, because it's like, no matter where you start, I feel like we've all had, like when you know Jesus, like it's just different, yeah? What What's changed in the last 18 months? What was crazy? <sighs> I, I can tell you exactly. Uh, the, the core shift is I grew up believing, you're good, you're interviewing me now, this Okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the core shift was I grew up believing or thinking that Jesus was a kind little shepherd boy that loved everybody mm. and he does, but that's the only version of Jesus that I knew. Right. right. And then 18 months ago I had an experience and, and listened to a sermon and, and realized that like, he is not just that, like he is the King, like the King of Kings, like the reign above it all. And he, this entity, Jesus came down and in the lowest, I mean, people literally spit on the face of God, right? Like that, it's insane. And in that state, he took on all of evil and all of darkness and all like forever from all eternity, from the beginning of time to the end of time and all at the same time, single-handedly. And he won, right? Like hallelujah. And like, when I realized that that was the guy that I, not even guy sounds too casual. Like that's yeah. the king that I serve and he loves me. And he wants a relationship with me. I was like, okay, yep. You can have everything, right? You can have it all. And so understanding even conceptually the power that he holds, that is what changed. And I'm like, oh, the Bible says do not live in fear. And I don't think there's been one time in the last 18 months where I've like genuinely been afraid. Come on. Right? Like, like seriously though, right? That's, that's winning. It is, right? And I believe that. And so it's such a fascinating concept because like I thought money was going to do that for me. I thought fame was going to do that for me. I thought success was going to do that for me. I thought something else was going to do it. And I was like, nope, just believe in Jesus. That's it. So that's what, yeah, that's what you Those are the things can't do that. Yeah. They try to, but anybody who's amassed even a little bit of money realizes pretty quick those feelings don't last. Security isn't there. Peace isn't there. It's only found in Jesus. Yeah, for sure. And I'm telling you, it's like you make that decision. I think you called it a core shift. Probably the core shift. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. You make that core shift, your trajectory changes. Everything. Your perspective changes. Yep. What you go for changes. Yep. So like what a lot of people have to realize is you're put down here. This is going to sound corny, but hear me out. Like we are deployed down here with missions and assignments and reasons and purposes. There's there's something for each of us to do. Yeah. And when you start doing it, Crazy. it's the greatest life imaginable. When you start, when you just say yes to it, yeah. like 
that's that's what it sounds like happened is like i'm just gonna say we say we talk about like say yes to the call and y'all know what that means yeah like you guys all everybody has that thing in the back of their head that you all know exactly what i'm talking about yeah. when i say you just need to say yes to it yeah and as you do doors start to open ideas start to come opportunities start to take shape clarity gets there yeah you start making moves you start doing stuff yeah. it's like you you said yes and now it's like it's the craziest 18 months i know you've already been you've been saved i guess but yeah. you're like i'm in now yeah like i'm all in like yeah. i'm i'm committed let's go yeah. baby we talk my pastor says uh, you entered a room with no exits yep. no way out yep and i wouldn't it could have all the exits and i wouldn't take any right yeah. like i'm like it's so crazy like people don't they talk about the peace that passes understanding, right? Or, you know, this sort of, this is like, what are you going to do? Take my money? Take, what are you going to do? Hurt me? Like, what are you going to kill me? Like, yeah, great. Sounds good. Persecute me? Criticize me? Like, do you, under, you don't understand what I have, right. right? And not because of me, because of him. I would yeah. love to, to continue this interview where you're interviewing me, but we're here to talk about you. It's right? probably going to happen again. I, I know, I know. I don't I mean to. Will, which I love, by the way. This is a great conversation back and forth. I'm, I'm very much enjoying this. Um, but, you start with God. So you start with God. Everything. Like, hey, I got to get out of this day job. What you have to understand is he's on your team. Mm. Romans 8.31 makes it super. There's so many scriptures that make it so clear. Mm. It literally says God is for you, mm. not against you. Yep. A lot of people forget that. Yeah. The reason is we, we take things that happen that are bad, things we don't like, bad experiences. And the problem is we give God the credit for them. But you have an enemy, you have an adversary, you have an yeah. opponent. He's the one that's the hinderer. Yeah. He's the one trying to take you out and slow you down. Yeah. Problem is a lot of people give God the credit for the stuff their enemy's doing to them. Mm. So then we start to think like, maybe God's mad at me. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I messed up. Maybe I was... But when you realize he's for you, yeah. not against you, yeah. when he's got plans that are good for you, yeah. not for disaster, plans to give you a future and a hope when you realize this and you realize that you're coming from that spot of having the ultimate teammate so to speak yeah. is like oh yeah i can't lose yeah you literally can't because it's already won okay yeah. let's get out of the stage job yeah okay, can't lose stage job yep yeah so i'm just i'm just encouraging anybody to take that stance on whatever they're facing whatever decision whatever thing they're wanting to do or accomplish yeah. is like let's just do it with god yeah because the bible says all things are possible with him yeah let's just do it with him Anyway, I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, let's get out of this day job. Yep. Start to see opportunities. I flash back to something I'd read in the four hour work week, that book by Tim Ferriss, which if you haven't read that book, it's, it's a must read. Just get it on your bookshelf. You need to have it in you. It's so much more than the cover states. It covers so many topics. But because of that book, I was able to see opportunities and then because of that prayer with God, I'm like, let's get after it. Let's go. Well, started an e-commerce site and, um, man, all the, all the stories. I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know how to build a website. I started getting up at 4 AM so that I would have time to spend with God. And then I would have time to learn and work on this side hustle. Yeah. And then I'd have to be at work at eight or eight 30, whatever it was. And I mean, you can get disciplined real quick when you got a vision, when you got something you yep, want. Quick. You can get, you get, how do you get it before? Super easy. I'm getting out of my day job. Yep. You can stay in yours. I'm getting out. And it's interesting. I think that for most entrepreneurs that I've interviewed, it's almost always the vision of to get away from pain at the beginning, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's never like, oh, I'm going to go into the promised land. It's like, this sucks. I'm going, right? And like, yeah. I'm getting out of Egypt. Yep. Yep. And yep. then we're getting in the promised land. Yeah. But the promised land has battles too. Yep. So we're getting out. We're getting out of Egypt. All right. Uh, and if you want to parallel, it's super cool because God delivered them from Egypt and then also gave them a guide to get them to where they were going. Right. So he'll guide you on this path. Yep. And you know, I'm telling you, it was like, I, <laughs> I was drop shipping. I learned what that was. Um, uh, essentially, I mean, most of you probably know, but you basically don't have to hold the products. You put up a website, somebody makes a purchase. You take their money they just sent you. You send a portion of it to a manufacturer. Manufacturer, They send it to the customer. Yep. It's a great business model to get started yep. with when you don't sure. know what you're doing. And, and, and for anyone that's like, oh, like I always think of, have you ever seen The Office? Ever watched The, 
I've oh I've seen that. Okay, so I hadn't until my I went my wife and I watched it like ten times. Okay, it, where they're talking about like so you're just a middleman, right? When they're talking about the paper, it's like mm-hmm. well yeah, the manufacturer wins here too because they don't want to have to sell the product. So you everybody right. wins here on this one too. Right. Yep. I'm presenting an offer and then yep. I'm giving them a great price. Yep. Manufacturer's thrilled. Yep. It's a win win win. Everybody wins. Yep. Yep. And so I started doing this. Well, I get I get a website super ugly. It was a free website. It might still be out there, but it was a weebly.com. Mm. Oh yeah. 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 And my, my domain still had weebly.com cause I used the free site. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Amazing. So I, <laughs> I get the website up super ugly. I had never even held the product in my hand. So I copy and pasted the photos from the manufacturer site to my website. They're horrible. And then I start cold emailing companies I think would want this product. My God. True entrepreneur. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Just figuring it out. Yeah. Yep. Just, hey, I got this product. There's no Alex Ramosi or Russell Brunson YouTube videos to watch. I guess maybe maybe Russell Brunson that maybe you don't pretend. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I start cold emailing and I just did this thing. This is, this is how I've lived most of my like how do I structure things in my head is um, I just sent 25 cold emails every day. And then in like, I want to say day 10, day 12, I got a sale. No way. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. All right. What were you selling? Uh, I don't want to mention it. Okay. 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 Because I actually still have that company today. Oh, wow. That's wild. Yeah. Which, which we'll, we'll tag that part yeah. of the story on them here in a minute. Yeah. Um, so here's what's great. I get the customer's money and I, Send the money to China, their portion of it. Yeah. It was about a 50-50 split. Send it to them. And it ends up taking about two weeks for the product. I wanted it to get to me first because I thought if I could get one, I could take my own pictures. I could get my hands on it and it would just be better for the website. Yeah. So it takes about two weeks to get to me. All right. Ladies like emailing me, calling me like, what's taking so long? Uh, from this super sketch website. Yeah. Yeah. With Weebly in the name. Yeah. Right. And as so I'm, I'm, I'm holding her off, you know, it's coming, you know, and, uh, this is so bad. So I, I get it. Take pictures of it. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> I go to ship it to her, mm-hmm. but I didn't, I didn't, and I was like feeling urgency because it had already been so long. I, I didn't have any boxes or anything in my house. Mm. So, um, we newly wed. I had, we'd gotten a blender. It's one of our wedding gifts. I had the blender box. Dude, this is bad. I put it in the blender box and I was like, okay, I got to tape this. And I was like, well, probably don't use scotch tape, but I had masking tape. So I took masking tape on my blender box (laughs) and dude, trying to make it look as nice as I could. It's pretty rough. Take it to the post office. They're like, hey, do you want to pay extra for the insurance and pay extra for the whatever? Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, 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 just get it to her. Like, we got, like, just go. I don't want to spend any more money. Yeah, yeah. Like a week later, I get a call from the post office and they're like, hey, we have this empty blender box, but there's nothing in it. Do you, do you know what, what was in it? Do you know what happened? And I was like, wait, what happened? They're like, it looks like you did a bad job with the taping. So yeah. the product fell out somewhere and we don't know where the product is. But we have the box if you want to come get the box. Oh, so we get to put it in or it just fell out? No, it was a, it's big. It fell out because I used masking tape in a blender box. So somewhere from here to California, it fell out. Was this an expensive item? Yeah. Oh, my. It was, it was more of a higher ticket. Yeah. Yeah. M- multiple hundreds of dollars. Wow. And, <laughs> and so I had to call the lady again. Yeah. Order another one. Yep. From China. Another two weeks. And then... Uh, so at this point. I can be kind of charming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, was like, I was trying to smooth it over, yeah, you yeah. know? She was like an older lady. I was yep. like, hey. Uh, it wasn't too bad. She was a little bit annoyed. But it ended up taking over a month for wow. her to get it. Yep. And I never made the blender box mistake again. Never again. Yeah. It's, it's But it's interesting how you make those mistakes like that, right? And you go and... Because we all have some version of that story too, right? I mean, probably not that extreme. That's pretty funny. That's pretty extreme. Um, that's pretty great. Um, <laughs> but like, then you, like you said, you never make the blender mistake, box mistake again, right? And that's, that's crazy. Dude. So how, how did, so how, like, that was what, a month after you started the e-com stuff? Yeah. It, it took me, 
Yeah, that's probably fair. It probably took, and then a couple months by the time it was all, got it actually shipped to her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I had kept emailing 25 a day. And so maybe another week went by, I got another sale. Oh, okay. So this one, first one was still in transit, figuring it yeah. out, got another order. Okay. So now it's like, okay. Um, I was emailing three different industries that I thought would be interested in this yeah. product, but it turns out really only one of them was interested. Hmm. So I cut the other two and I started just focusing on that one. Yeah. And then it was like, let me, I heard about Fiverr. Let me pay somebody on Fiverr to go yeah. scrape all these emails. So I'm just opening my cold email game. Dude, you know, one of the craziest, one of the craziest things about Fiverr is, so I am not a fan of college. Um, we don't, we won't go down the rabbit hole. I think that college for almost every industry is a, pretty much a scam, right? But I asked my, so my sisters are, are in school and I have friends that went to college. I was like, Hey, did they ever teach you about fiber in college? No one, not one single time. I'm like, what are they te- like? That's like the number one hack in all of life right there is just to just know use that Fiverr exists yeah. and they don't even teach you pay whatever, a hundred thousand dollars to go and you could go to go on Fiverr and get most of the stuff done. <laughs> Drives me insane. Anyway, <laughs> Fiverr game changer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'm figuring stuff out, Yeah, but I got the taste. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this is possible. Yep. Let's go. Yep. Right. And that so, was your first dollar online. Yep. Yep. That was my first dollar online. Yeah. Dude. So good drug. It's, right. oh yeah. It's that, it's a taste of freedom. It is a taste of freedom. Belief yep. was possible. Yeah. So I was, I was fired up at that point. And, but it, it, it wasn't making enough to quit job, yeah. quit the job yet or anything. So anyway. We get to, we fast forward, I'm working on it. We had, we had some decent months that would make, I think maybe the best month was like two grand profit, um, which is great Yeah. on top of my day job. And my wife was working. She was a school yeah. teacher and we uh, get pregnant in, uh, I guess it'd be the end of 2013 okay. and our daughter, Anna is to be born in June of 2014. Okay. So we we get there she's a school teacher the school year ends in may okay and man we're talking and we're dreaming and she too but really really me i was like i really want her to be a stay-at-home mom yeah she really desires that too yeah so like i said we do everything with god yep god first and so i mean literally everything yeah. Like, it's not like this like, cheesy I'd, thing. I'd it's like a legit thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we got together and prayed and, and we get in the word and we know there's scriptures like Psalms 37, four, you delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires yep. of your heart. So me and my wife catch hands and pray. And we said, God, it's a desire of our heart for her to be a stay at home mom. And you know, we delight ourselves in you. Yeah. Right. We're plugged into church. We're serving everywhere. I mean, we're there every time the doors are. We love, yeah. we love God. We love church. Yeah. Yeah. So we qualify. Yeah. A lot of the Bible's written with these kind of conditional promises. Yeah. It's if you do this, you'll get this result. Salvation is unconditional, but his love yeah. Yeah. is unconditional. Yeah. But a lot of the the promises are. Yeah. Yep. But they're super simple. Yeah. So hey, do this, you'll get that. So a lot of them are just yeah, cause and effect them. Yeah. So this is one says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of our heart. So what we do is we go to God and we're like, hey, God, you said you would do this. We believe you. So it's a desire of my wife's heart to be a stay-at-home mom. So we went ahead, even though financially the numbers did not make sense. We bought a new home and some different things and numbers weren't there. And so she went ahead and she put in her resignation. She said, I will not be coming back for the next school year. She'd been teaching for six or seven years at the time. And we just said, Hey, let's just retire. So this is what it looks like to act in faith and like actually apply, actually apply God's word. The logical way is let my side hustle make me a whole lot more money. And then when things are super simple and I don't need to use faith, let me take a step. Yep. So we just say, you know what? God hears what your word says. We believe it. So we're going to act on this. I, I, I want to pause there for a second, though, on that, because it sounds like one could hear that and be like, oh, that might have been foolishly irresponsible. But yeah. It sounds like the reason that you were able to make that decision 
yes, faith in God, which was the most important part. And there was also a path in the sense of like, you had this other thing to where you were like, hey, it's not like you had a fixed income that was never going to change and the, you couldn't pay the bills on it. And you're just like, God, you're just going to give us extra money every month, right? Like there was a, it was like, hey, we believe you and we believe that and we we know that this is, there is a actual path to making this happen. We don't know what that looks like, but it's not like, logically it didn't make sense, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was financially irresponsible be, because there was a path out. Yes or no? On paper, it was irresponsible. Yes. I'll be real with you. Yeah. But I'm talking about like on the real, real, right? Like there was a path to a non-fixed income, right? Yes. Well, but there always is. I, I, I get what you're saying. Let me, fi- let me, let me finish the story. Let me finish the story. Okay. So then that's my answer. Okay. Uh, what you're looking for. If not, we'll come back. Yeah. To yeah. It. For sure. So we said this, this is what we're going to do. Put in, put in her resignation. Yep. And we're just like, she was at the time, um, 28, I think. Okay. And we're like You're 29, 29, 29 going into. Yeah. And, and yeah, I was 29. I remember now. And we're like, let's just, let's just retire you. Okay. And the next month we made $9,000 in the side hustle. Was in the side hustle. Mm-hmm. Didn't do anything different. It just came to us. Mm-hmm. I didn't hustle harder. I would now I, I, I was putting my hand to something. Yeah. So the Bible does another one of those promises is. Right. You obey the voice of the Lord, everything you put your hand to will prosper. Yes. I'm putting my hand to stuff mm-hmm. and I'm listening to the Lord. Yeah. Doing stuff with him. Yes. Okay. That's the key. Mm-hmm. Just do it with him. So, but, but to, to, to come back to the point though, what I'm saying is, is that side hustle existed. And if it had not, if it was like just your fixed income job, there's no way she, you go, let's retire you when my fixed income is this and my expenses are this, you would not have made the decision if there wasn't a way to increase income in some capacity, right? That's a great question. With me, I might have still made that choice. Interesting. I'll be honest with you. Cause, cause I, I am, I am a believer and I admire your faith, right? I am, I am a believer in like God gives us a brain. We should use it. And I don't mean logically on paper because I think the world's logic doesn't make sense. Right. But if it's something like, Hey, I want to retire my wife or I want to do these things. It's one thing if it's like missions work, right? And we're going to go sell everything, go be a missionary. Like I get it. In that, in that, this sense, I look at something like this and I go, totally makes sense why you made that decision. You trusted God that he was going to make it happen, like it, to light yourself in him or whatever. And guess what? There was a literal path to like, not like that he was actually working, but it wasn't dumb, right? Whereas if, if you were making less money than you were spending every month and there was no other way that you were increasing or be able to make up the difference, to me, quitting your job at that point or like having someone do to where you're literally in the negative every month just because, like, just to stay at home, right? Like, t- to me, that, to me, that seems dumb. I see, I get, I see where you're going. Does that make sense? Well, here's here's some of the differences, though. Yeah, okay. Is, it it wasn't just for her to stay at home. It was for him, her to become a stay-at-home mom. Right. There's a dream. There's a delight behind that, a desire of her heart behind it. Mm-hmm. So, that's different. We are don't we are not proponents of being lazy and doing nothing. No, I understand. That's different. I understand. But with that, my wife's desire. So I'm talking to God about this, and I'm like, God, that's your daughter. Mm-hmm. It's in her heart to be home with our baby. That's coming. You know what your daughter wants. Yeah. And there's been many times in, uh, since I was married, talks I've had with God about finances. Yeah. And he reminds me all the time. He's like, hey, me and you got the money thing. Let her yeah. go do it on her Which heart. I agree with. And so that right there is enough. That's my belief. It's like, okay, I have a question. Okay, so he'll take care of us. You, as the man, like, you know, your job is to provide, right? Yes. I've got some thoughts, but yes. Provide, broadly speaking. Okay. Right? And in, in, in your marriage, you just said it was like, hey, you and God got the money thing. Yep. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. So, in this sense, like when she was like, "Hey, I want to be a stay-at-home mom," it's a desire of your, her heart, desire of your heart to allow me may, may help make that happen. Mm-hmm. You you took on the responsibility that said, "I'm going to trust God," and now it's my responsibility. If she's going to be a stay-at-home mom in this setting, you took on the responsibility to say, "It's between God and I now." To I mean, you and your yeah, w- yeah, yeah. wife are one, but like as far as this is concerned, right? Like to make sure that things are financially taken care of and she's provided for that. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. 
all right, I'm good with that. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I don't want to put that on her. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to. I want her to be able to enjoy being a wife, being a mother. Yep. She doesn't need to carry any financial burdens. Yep. So me and God got this. Yep. Right. We're working together. We're a team. Yeah, I like that. Let's go. Yeah. Dude. And it's been a fun journey from that point forward. When you take these like, you can call them steps of faith. When you take these, these steps of faith and you actually apply the action part, something, something shifts in you. It's like you get, it's, it's how you level up. Yep. You hit a new level. And from that point forward, you don't go backwards. Yep. I agree with that. So I'm going to put a pin there and we're going to come back to this because I, there's one more thing. There, there's something we got to cover first because I'm so, oh man, I think we could talk for like 10 hours. Dude, I have so much to pick. Hit me. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put a pin on that. I want you to fast forward to current. Okay. Okay. Like get, catch me up to from this point where you're at, where we just left off to like what, what you do now, like catch me up to speed in like two minutes and like fill me in on what you're doing now. I will try. Okay. So you're like, you, you me, we talk like, yeah, we'll try two minutes, like 10 hours later. Yeah. E-commerce. Yep. Moves into a uh, classic progression. Let me sell an online course yep. on how I built my e-commerce business. Yep. Right. Um, I, I, I did figure out some different traffic sources other than cold email. Yep, that's eventually. Good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I got some YouTube traffic and then uh, really locked in uh, the SEO spots. Yeah. Okay. And that's, what really made it work um, to like get steady on traffic Google on Google. Yeah. Yep. And so I actually still own that company today. Um, I have somebody else who runs it for me. And so it's, I truly spend two hours a month on it, three hours a month on it. Amazing. Congratulations. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Like seriously, the most people cannot do that. So well done. And it, and it, it's very side. It's, it's very, very, very side. Um, but it's great. I'm blessed. I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Uh, from there, I actually started a membership style course, probably 2015, 2016, okay. low ticket monthly. I got that to where it so you was, were like in before it was cool. Well, it actually used to be cool back then. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Right. We have cycled. Okay. All right. It's, it's back. Thanks. It's back. Interesting. Okay. This is not new. Um, and I was in courses that taught you how to build membership sites wow, okay. back in 2015, 2016. And uh, mine was twenty seven dollars a month or thirty seven a month, and this is great. I I did the math. I realized how many people I needed to get in it to cover my household expenses. Yep. And I remember at the time, uh, I have so many cool stories to tell you. We got our expenses down. Um, I think there were thirty five hundred a month. Wow! To live, and that's like, <laughs> like oh my gosh, that's amazing. But we like, and we we had a mortgage on our home, and we had a, we had a, a nice. It was better than a starter home. It yeah. was like at least half a step up. Yeah. Right. And then uh, I remember we had a Infinity QX80. So we had a nice car. And um, yeah, it was, it was it was awesome. But it was only about 3500 a month. Okay. And I got this membership site to like 3700 a month in recurring revenue. And I remember I had like a tally mark thing. I was like trying to get people into the program. I was like new. Yeah. I was launching stuff to my list. I was like, let's try it. One dollar trial, a seven dollar trial, a all these different things, and I remember I moved all my bills to one bank account, put them all on auto draft, and then had all the money, the profits from here come into that account. So I looked at it like my freedom account because it literally covered my expenses with monthly recurring revenue, and I had them all just that's all that bank sure account was for taxes, but. Okay, okay, sorry, 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 I'm ruining the story. My bad, my bro. Bad. Come on, my bad. I'm so sorry, Dude. I'm so sorry. It's like 2016. We don't have to go part of it. Yeah. Why are you bringing up old stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but that was, that was another milestone moment where it was like, oh, wait, I'm free. I think it, yeah, I think it free. Yeah. All right. And then I had a little bit of money from the e-commerce business and, uh, man, oh, I skipped, I skipped one quick part. We retired her in June. I quit in October. Oh, wow. And the numbers didn't fully line up either. But when I quit, guess what happened? Angry. Got a bump. Got some increase. You know, that's my word. Got some increase, right? So teaching an online course, um, I get into, from that point, I get into higher ticket stuff. I had started on the side a blog and a podcast called Faith Life Money. Faith Life Money. 
right. and I start teaching things about faith, things about life, things about money, and applying God's word into these areas, how to do it. We've already done a little bit of it here as we've been talking, but it's just things like this, yeah. right? And so I'm doing that on the side and man, I'll be honest with you, that's where my heart was. Yeah. But I, at the time, I was like, I can't figure out, like, I'm not really sure this could make a lot of money and... I don't know. I kept doing it because it was awesome and I enjoyed it. And I really, really uh, like to write. I like to speak. I like yeah. to record. I like to do these things. So I was doing that on the side. Then I started getting into high ticket. And I've got a pretty good skill set when it comes to writing sales copy. I take on some clients. Uh, I get into Facebook ads and Instagram ads. I take some people's businesses I get them to million dollar levels yeah. and I'm having, I'm having a great time, yeah. but I'm just figuring stuff out. Yep. Like it's, 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 it's a mess, but it's pretty fun. Yep. But then as you've probably discovered, that's, but it's pretty fun. That that's a great line right there. Yep. Yep. That's a lot of life, right? Yep. Yep. But there's a shelf life to that life. Yep. For sure. And I remember hitting that. I'm, I'm skipping some stuff. We'll see if we come back at some point. I'm skipping some stuff, but that's the journey. Um, higher ticket start selling things for like $3,500. And then I get up higher, higher, higher. I think the, the highest I got to was like $16,000 on different things. And um, I eventually start coaching for one of the big online internet companies. It was awesome. Met a lot of cool people. Yeah. A lot of people in the inner circle were also from there too. Uh, so anyway, it was, it was just a great, yeah. it was a great journey. Met a lot of cool people in the space. Leveled me up. I'm here working with hundreds of millionaires i say deca millionaires yeah. and people just very successful very successful businesses i learned so much and that was a big growth accelerator for me was being a coach and consultant in those scenarios yeah. seeing the different businesses finding out what actually makes businesses work and what yeah. doesn't work what actually matters what doesn't matter yeah. what matters what character traits matter yeah and things like this yeah so today stop doing all that I still have the e-commerce business, super side. Today, what I get to do is I get to, like I said earlier, I get to teach people how to understand and apply God's word. Teach them how to actually walk it out so they can be successful in every area. So we teach on faith, okay. we teach on finances, family, marriage, fulfillment, finding your thing, and even fitness. And so we've got this approach we call it the increase method and you can dial in these steps in all the areas so that your life gets better every day. And is this targeted more for entrepreneurs, more for people that are wanting to become an entrepreneur? Or does it matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Most people, so we teach in our program that we want everyone to have what we call an increase avenue. It is a path or a method. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, go, go. No, go. I know what you're talking about. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. We want everybody to have this. Mm -hmm. um, in the Bible, there is a, a, a lot of people who made money through like having a field. There's a lot of agricultural yep. analogies in there, yeah. right? Well, that's, I think for everybody, there's something to learn from that. That is how money flows to us is through an avenue. It's through a way. Now, what's cool though, is even if you don't have one, you can ask God for one. Hmm. And you can say, God, I need a new way for increase to come into my life. What are your thoughts? And he'll give you a plan. He'll give you a strategy. Hmm. So we teach this as a membership site membership, but we make it, we make it easily accessible. Okay. So basically what happens is when you come in and you, you support us at any level, we give you access to these trainings. We give you access to curated content. Um, then we have weekly zoom calls and it? you can give any amount. Really? Yep. I've, we've got tiers. Oh, okay. Okay. And most people pick some of the, you know, 50 bucks a month, 75, 100 bucks a month. We've got some different tiers and get some different things with them. But even at the lowest tier, you can still come hang out with us. Interesting. Okay. And that's in increase. Sorry, what was the name of the, the? We call it the increase method. The increase method. You can go to increaseministries.com. Increase ministries. Okay. okay. If you want to learn more about it. Okay. This is great. That was good. That, okay. All right. <laughs> cool. So questions. All right. So we're, we're, Hit me with all of them. All right. Hold gonna, nothing back. We're going to frame this up. Okay. I'm an open book. So I'm going to, we're going to take this and we're going to jump back and forth between going back to where we we're at, put the pin in the conversation, right? Where, okay. where you basically, 
your wife, you, we decided, hey, we're gonna, you're going to retire your wife and we're going to go into this. And you're also here in this uh, this stage now. OK, so the word when people I'll say when I when I hear the word increase, I think that there is a, a natural tendency to automatically associate that with prosperity gospel. What are your thoughts on prosperity gospel specifically? Mm, this can be fun. Yeah. Well, there's certain words. So prosperity gospel isn't a thing. In the Bible, I'm but just reading. Say isn't a thing. Like you mean like biblically, biblically it is not okay. a thing. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. Because it definitely exists. Like when I concept of it, right? Like people teach it, right? But I often challenge when people bring it up to me. I usually challenge them, okay. and I'm like, "What do you mean? Challenge? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? Yeah. What do, what I do mean? you mean? So, in the simplest nutshell, if you follow God, life will be great. You will have financial provision. Money will be good. Everything's great. Follow God, do what he says, everything will be good. Like that. That's prosperity gospel? That's prosperity gospel. See, I feel like that's the gospel. But so how would you then go about the, you know, when it's like there will be, I mean, there's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations, tribulations, there's going to be hardships, there's going to be like, you're going to have struggles, yeah. like all those things. Like, how would you go about that? Okay, finish the, finish the uh, scripture. In this world, you'll have many trials, but what does it say next? Uh, I mean, there's several different verses. It says, which, yeah. it says, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. There's another scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Finishes the same way. Be of good cheer. So it doesn't mean the prosperity gospel doesn't mean you don't have bad things ever. Yeah. It means you win. Mm -hmm. It means Jesus who lives in you. Those are red letters. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. That okay. means be happy. Yep. Like, yes, stuff happens. You're in the world. Doesn't matter. God's for you, not against you. First Corinthians 15, 50, 57. It says he always leads us in to victory. Mm -hmm. Always. Okay. So hold on real quick. One okay, more. Good, one yeah, more. This is good. Yep. yep. Do you know the definition of prosperity? I don't actually. And this is the problem is there's so many biblical words and definitions, people don't even know what they mean. The word prosperity, here's one of the things that God told me when people started like getting weird around that word mm -hmm. was he said, hey, remember, I put that word in my book. Mm -hmm. Honor that word. That's a hand-selected word. Don't let the devil counterfeit that word. Like that's one of my words. Mm -hmm. Psalms 35, 27 says, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified mm -hmm. who has pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Mm. He actually takes pleasure in us. Yeah. And our prosperity. Yeah. I mean, prosperity. It's, it's, I have a good plan or um, I, I, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, right? Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've got plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Mm -hmm to give you a future and a hope. So if he's got prosperity plans for us, if he delights in our prosperity, you're a dad. Mm -hmm. You delight in your kid's prosperity. Yeah. Prosperity, the definition simply means to advance or obtain the thing which is desired. It's, it's being pushed forward is like the second definition of it. To advance, to increase, to push something forward. So he delights when you're winning. He delights when you're moving towards the thing, when you're moving towards a goal. You're getting... Your marriage is getting better. Your money is getting better. You're calling, man, you're making a bigger impact. He's looking down on Josh. He's like, take pleasure in that. Come yeah. on. Okay. That's prosperity. Okay. The good news, the gospel, right? The gospel simply means good news. Salvation. I've done this because I've actually teach at my church in the school of ministry. I have done a lot of a lot of Bible. This is good. This is why I'm, I'm I've done a lot of yeah. a lot of research. A yeah. lot of time I've had to learn these things for myself because I'm not going to teach it if I don't know it. Yep. So these things are are deep in me. Yeah. That word salvation, the word saved, they have the root word sozo, mm -hmm. and what that means is actually see we think salvation means when you die you go to heaven, and that's not incorrect, but it's incomplete. Okay. The full definition is. You are saved, healed, delivered, prosperous now. 
and later. Mm. So when somebody gets saved, it means you are fully delivered from sin, from sickness, yeah. from premature or spiritual death. All of these things that we've watered that word down, yeah. salvation and the gospel and, and the good news. It's, it actually means so much more yeah. than we give it credit for. When you understand that, it, it takes the joy of being saved to another level. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So this prosperity gospel that you described, and see, I think you actually put it more mildly than I think others would. They would have just straight up gone like, you know, you'll get rich and all these things. Yeah. You just said things will go well for you. you know, well, if you believe in God, you will have financial prosperity. I would say it's probably the the the, the summarized the most summarized version that I could probably make it. But I'll make it super easy. If you believe in God and follow the steps, mm -hmm. you will be financially prosperous. Okay, so do you think that that is true for everyone? And what I mean by that is, do you, you had said, hey, we, have, we have missions, right? We, we're put on this earth for a, a, a reason, right? And I have seven brothers and sisters. I'm one of eight. And like, I look at my sister, like she and I could not be more polar opposite, right? Love her to death, right? But like, the concept of, of business and all, all this, I mean, and controversial or speak your mind. I mean, she's a mercy and she just wants to like love on people and whatever, right? She has a very different mission and calling and set of tools and gifts than I do, mm -hmm. right? And so for her, living out God's will for her life, I can't, I, I, I can't imagine her having massive financial prosperity. Not that she would necessarily need to be in lack if she follows, you know, follows the steps or whatever, but the... Do you believe that different people have different missions and different callings? Absolutely. So do you believe that all of them, if you follow out exactly what God said, that all of them would lead to you end up with, with wealth? They would have an abundance. Okay. D uh, define the difference or explain the difference. Yeah. So probably what you're hinting at is like everyone's going to be rich in the sense of hundreds of thousands or millions in the bank. Rich, another definition yep. that we don't know. Of, it yep. just means abundantly supplied yeah, yep a full supply yes your sister absolutely could and should have a full supply i, I agree with that 100 percent. so she's not in lack she has everything she needs to get her mission done yes okay that's available to everybody okay so uh, and i'll preface this by saying one of the things you said earlier which like makes there's a high level of trust because of it was when you said that we have an enemy right and this enemy is intentionally, he wants to see, kill, and destroy us, right? You you mentioned that. So it's not like when bad things happen, we don't credit that with God, we credit that to the enemy, right? Or we need to. Mm -hmm. So when I have looked at, let's say, like I I love entrepreneurship, I love making money, I love the, this, like I'm not poor, right? <laughs> like, And so I have no problem with money, I have no problem with wealth in any way, shape, or form. The issue that I tend to run into, or, or that I, yeah, that I run into with people that, teach what I would call prosperity gospel, which perhaps I need to update my definition, is this concept of, hey, life is hard right now, right? Uh, give your life to Christ and he will make you financially prosperous. And all your problem, not all your problems, but all your financial worries, those things are all going to go away and like you'll make a bunch of money and if you just follow things and everybody should go and do this. And I'm like, but there's an enemy and in my head, it's like the more, the more you do for God, the more you're going to become a target to the enemy. Yes. Yes. So if in this world, we know there's going to be struggles and trials. And in this world, we know that we have to suit up with the full armor of God and that we are in a battle. Then if you follow Christ and if you dedicate your life to him, even if you follow his ways, like there have been people that have been very committed to trying to follow God's ways and not been financially prosperous, right? And what would you say to that person that's like, I've tried to do everything God told me to do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm in church, I'm following the Bible, I'm doing the things, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm trying, and I'm just get, keep getting hit, and I keep getting hit, yeah. keep getting hit. Like, what would you say to that person as far as, because I know a little bit more about you just because of, from our previous conversations or whatever, because I know you've had setbacks and I know you've had trials, right? Mm -hmm. Someone could listen to the story and be like, bro, it sounds like, Sounds like things just worked out for you at every step, right? right? Right. So, not everybody has that story, right? So, what would you say to that person when it comes to what you would call? Yeah, I'm defining as prosperity gospel. Okay. So, first off, I don't have that story. I do have a lot of setbacks. Yeah, I do have all the yes, and I know that. I've got the yeah. journey. I, I understand that. Yeah, 
I've got the journey. That I actually appreciate you pointing that out. Yeah. Because I I like even when you asked a little bit of my story, we did the accelerated yep. version. Yep. I'll be honest with you, like the the setbacks, some of them probably if I if I went back and like really dug them out, I think a lot of people would be like, wow, that's that was actually pretty rough. Yeah. And I say this with like full sincerity, honesty, is like I don't dwell on them. I don't really remember them. I can, I can get, I could probably get there. But when I tell that story, it's not to gloss over any setbacks. It's like, I literally don't think about them. Yeah. They're gone out of my mind. Yeah. Paul said this, he said, uh, he said, the one thing I do, I forget the past and I press forward towards the higher call. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he murdered Christians. Yeah. Crazy. Right. So you probably haven't done anything that bad. Yeah. So right. forgetting our past, it's like, man, but yes, it's the, the, the promise is not everything goes well for you always perfectly, mm-hmm. but it always ends up well for you. Okay. So, and so I think that's when you define that, when you, would you, would you say an accurate view of what you have, let's call this prosperity gospel, but let's use a definition from what I'm hearing you say, which is if you follow what God tells you to do you will never be in lack. And you will not just never be in lack, but you will also have abundance in whatever area you define as abundance. It may require a process to get there. Yes. It won't, I'm not saying it'll be instant. Yes. So. But that that is the end result. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Well, it has to be. Yeah. There's too many promises and, and I, in I there. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. I'm not it's, saying everyone's going to be millionaires. Yeah. Hear me correctly. But a full supply is available to anybody. A full supply to get the job done, to get their mission done, what they are called to do. They can do that without lacking. So I got one one more question on this and I'm going to, we'll tie back into the last thing, which is in America, it's a lot easier to do this. Right. So go to a third world country, go to someone without opportunities, go to, you know, someplace where, you know, violence, and rape and, and, you know, all these things are prevalent all the time. Right. And, and there's not economic prosperity and, you know, people are literally starving due to lack of food, right. And availability and clean water and things of that nature. That person follows God, right. That person finds Christ, they get a Bible and they try to do everything there. Do you think the same principles apply there as well? Bible wasn't written to Americans. I understand. No. And so that's why I'm asking. Cause I'm like, they're not going to have, they literally will not have enough food. They literally don't have enough like clean water. They, I mean, they, that's literally a thing. Right. And so in that setting, like how does, how does financial prosperity or not financial prosperity, how does prosperity and ab- abundance play out in that, in that setting? Well, the Bible promises that like, even there's, there's a, a Psalm David wrote that even in times of famine, you'll have more than enough. So let me, let me, let me answer that yeah, yeah, go by ahead. going back to the guy okay. earlier that you talked about. Who's like, man, I feel like I'm doing the stuff, yes. but it's not working. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I get to, I get to field that question yes. somewhat often. Perfect. Right. That's, that's a common one. And it's a, it's a great question. Yeah. The answer is in what I call you have to make the great shift. Okay. Okay. In, I believe it's Matthew nine twenty nine is where Jesus says, be it unto you according to your faith. One translation says, you'll become what you have believed. Your faith, your trust, your confidence is what actually gets you the result. The great shift, when somebody comes and look, I I get it because I've been there. That feeling, that thought of, man, God, it's not working. God, you're not blessing me. God, why aren't you? God, I'm doing all the things. The... I know it sounds subtle, but it's pivotal to make this great shift on the inside. And the great shift is this. That person feels like they're at the bottom of the mountain and that whatever they want up at top could be health, could be money, could be whatever. And they're scraping and they are climbing and they're trying to get it, but it's just out of reach. The reality of it, because of what Jesus did, the truth is that we're actually already on top of the mountain and we're already victorious. We're actually not fighting for the victory. 
from we're us. fighting from yes. the victory. Yes. It is the enemy who is telling us it isn't working. When you start to say it's not working, you negate the law of faith because you're saying, I don't believe it's working. Therefore, it can't. The great shift says it is working. And then when something negative comes, you get that you get that bill in the mail, the unexpected bill in the mail from the IRS. You don't look at it and say, God, why isn't it working? You say, God, I thank you it's working. God, I thank you that you meet all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 19. It's a promise. Yeah. You stand on that promise. And you say, God, just like, just like my wife and I did with, with retiring her, yeah. right? We stand on this. this is what we believe. And see, belief will always, true belief, if you really believe, there will be an action step that goes with it. I, I 100% believe that. Absolutely. Has to. Has, has to. It's yep. the same thing. Faith is action. Belief actually is action. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. Faith is not just going to church or saying words. Mm. There will always be, James talks about this in chapter two. He says, yeah. you complete your faith yes. with the corresponding action. You don't have the action. He says, your faith is useless. Yep. Doesn't do anything. If that works, you're dead. 100%. And so yep. with a true, caring, loving heart, I get to have this conversation a lot. But a lot of the people who continually struggle for years and years and years who love God, yes. they do. Yeah. But they haven't made the great shift. They're still on this side of it's not working. Everything and and some of it could be that that incorrect expectation. I thought when I got saved, everything would be perfect. I would be rich instantly. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. Just a little bit of reading of the Bible yourself, and you'll find out how it actually works. Yeah. It isn't like that. Yeah. But you overcome everything. You win. Yeah. And we've already won. Interesting. Okay. This is really good. Um, I think if we go into any more topics, we're going to just go down a rabbit on it. The, but we'll have to do a part two of this. I was going to say, there might be a part two there, in here. There, there really is, is because I want, I think, I think that we probably believe close to the same thing. Probably not exactly the same, but that's okay. But like the difference of, and just to be clear, you are not, you do not believe that if you, if you believe in Christ and you follow everything he says that you become rich, like financially rich. I believe you can have a full supply. If you follow the steps, he outlines. Right, but like that doesn't mean you're going to make, like everyone that follows Christ, it's not like follow God, tie the church, do the steps, become a millionaire, right? I don't say that, no. Right, that's not what you believe, right? You believe that they will become in a full supply, which, and that may, that may yield to riches in some people's lives. And for others, it might not be financial riches. It might be just enough and they're happy with that and that's all, and that's full to them. Yes? Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. I appreciate it. I didn't say, I didn't say anything different. I know. I'm just. I, no, I was just making sure. I was just. I was just clarifying that that uh, that is there because I want. I do want to get into the nitty gritty of this because for someone like me, I think the conversation that we just had was a beginner level conversation of like, here's what you believe, and I've, I've asked some questions. But as someone who has studied this a lot, and I like um, looking into, like for example, uh, generations on things. Um, you know, my dad. My dad was the one that broke a lot of generational curses, like, like legitimate, like things. And so while I am going to be the one that changes the trajectory of, of my family financially, right? Uh, he was certainly the one that changed it for not only just me, but extended. I mean, in so many ways, he got you guys off the ground and, and out of the, I mean, like he followed God to the point where, I mean, like, like insane amounts of, of just tor you know, things that were shifted because of him. Right. And so I get to live in that blessing. Awesome. And so I look at, I look at, you know, someone like me and then I look at someone who is my dad. Right. And I go, we are not even remotely fighting the same battle. Right. Well, we're fighting against the same enemy. Right. And so I've like, I go so far and I, I go, I wonder how much, like, I wonder if it's different and I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm learning all this. Right. I wonder if it's different depending upon like your past generations and, and your, and, and your family and, and, you know, the, the people around you. Cause like I am a 100% free will take personal responsibility for your life type of deal. Yeah. But it's like, there seems to be more to it than what you're communicating, but I also know you're not dumb and you've thought through this a lot. And so we'll have to, we will have to have a follow up conversation. We'll have to do a round two of this, but I appreciate it. Um, any other thoughts on that? On what you said about your dad? On that or that anything that we've talked about so far? I believe everything hinges uh, kind of on, like I said, that law of faith. Yeah. 
be it done unto you yep. according to your faith. One translation says, be it done unto you according to what you have believed. Yep. So praise the Lord, your dad yeah. got you guys Insane. going. Yes. Right? Yes. The level of success that you have, it's it's up to the limits you put on your life. I agree with that. Yes. It's you get with God and you say, where are we going with this thing? Yeah. And here's the thing about God. What does he, what, what plans does he have for you? Good plans. Plans to prosper you. Yeah. He wants you to accelerate. He wants you to move towards that goal. He wants you to progress. He wants you to advance. He wants you to increase. Yep. Those are the plans. One translation says, those are the thoughts he thinks towards you. Mm. So he's looking down at Josh and he's like, let's go, baby. What are we doing? Come on. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let's yeah. help some more people. Yeah. Let's get this podcast out to more people. Let's yeah. interview some more people. Think, what are we doing? Quick quick side note. Do you think that like for example, it, it would it would assume that like you wanted to retire your wife, your wife wanted to retire and be a stay at home mom, right? Which by the way, my wife is a stay at home mom as well. I mean, she teaches like a part time yoga class because she likes it. But like my wife stay at home like loves love. My wife being, teaches at church. Right? So yeah, there you go. Right? Sunday school. So, yeah. Basically that, right? And so like, she loves being a mom. Like I'm so blessed. My wife is incredible, incredible. I cannot speak more highly of her. And she is, I'm so blessed beyond, beyond my wildest dreams of, that she is, right? It also would seem that, that the reason that you were blessed was because that the desire of your heart was in a line with what God said. Because just because you wanted to do something, if it's not in line with what God said, then you're not gonna get blessed for it, right? So here's what's cool. John 15, seven. Right, this is one one of the ones where Jesus is talking. Yep, and he says, "If my words abide in you, and you abide in me, abide means dwell, live. Yep. Right, we're dwelling." He said, "You can ask for whatever you want; it's going to be done for you." But you can't ask for something that's not in alignment with Him. But you skip the first part. Why would it be out of line with Him if He abides in me and I abide in Him? If we're if I'm meditating on His words, whatever I desire is going to be the things that he's put in my heart. Listen. So you're going to you're going to you're going to the natural right now. Yeah. And you're thinking about different you're thinking about things that aren't actually how people operate. Cuz he says, look, here's what we're talking about. Like yeah. the you just said we're monsters. We could ask for some weird stuff. No, like like humans are capable of horrible horrible things. Well then Jesus's words aren't abiding in them. No, I'm capable of horrible, horrible things, but by the grace of God, it's not just, it's not just because his word is abiding. I mean, he, he okay. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Are you going to ask for horrible things? Are you going to go to God and pray for something horrible? No, I'm not going to go pray to God for something horrible, but I'm like people battle. Like there are real internal struggles and there are real, like real things that like people like wrestle with. That's like that affect that affect decision-making and affect things that like they're wrestling with and like will cloud their judgment without even realizing it, right? And so like, I I mean, I am in the word, I am in church, I am, you know, like I love Jesus. I mean, I love him, right? And I still have my own internal struggles and like those don't go away. That will forever be a wrestle. And I know that there- Why? Are... Because I'm here in this earth. You, what, what, what do you mean they won't ever go away? Well, once, I mean, once Jesus returns or I die and go you know, spend eternity with him, like, like you can't be delivered from them. You can't get past it. You can't develop through them. No, like you're still going to deal with them for the rest of your life. I mean, this is Paul in the Bible. He had the thorn in his side. He, he prayed to God, God, take it away over and over and over and over again. And God never took the, the, the thorn away. Right. Like we, there's those things that you wrestle with that God will not take away because that is how we wrestle with God. That's how we become more like him is to, is to, to wrestle with it and to struggle and to, to need him to save us. Right. Like we need him in order to be saved, right? And if like, if all of our struggle goes away, if the thorn in your side goes away, if those internal battles go away, then we don't need, then we don't need Christ, right? But if we wrestle with them and we, we deal with them, like then we, it's the constant reminder that we need him, right? Yes? I don't think so, but. Interesting. No. Why not? I don't believe that that's, I don't believe that that's how it works. So the Bible does actually use the word predestination. Oh, are you a predestinationist? Well, no, listen. Okay, okay. Listen, okay. Here's, what it, here's where it uses it. It says you are predestined to be transformed into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. That's where it uses that word. Yes. So, of course, there are areas that we develop with, but I don't, I 
fully don't think that they're just going to be there forever and we just have to deal with them forever. No. Really? God can help you deliver life. So, so what is going back to that definition of being saved? You go look up the, the Greek or you can look up the Hebrew, but that word, that word sozo, that word saved, it means one of the definition is delivered. Yeah. It's, you are delivered from those things. Yeah. But if you say, it's just going to be with me forever. It's like, if you want it In to be, life. no, I can get out this. L- no, see, that's what I'm talking about. Salvation is for now also and later. So it's not like I have to struggle until I die. You're with God. He's in you. I don't know if there's room for this. I don't know what you're describing per se, but it has the characteristics of something not of God. Yes, because we're fallen. We live in a fallen world. And if we're in the fallen world until Christ returns and brings heaven to earth and we walk in the garden again with him, like there's going to be that struggle and there's going to be that. I mean, there's going to be, I mean, we're humans. We're in a fallen world. We have desires that aren't, do you believe we're inherently good? Now that I'm saved, yes. You believe that you're inherently good now that you are saved? Jesus lives in me, yeah. Okay. But are you inherently good or are you inherently fallen and now Christ has saved you so the way that God views you is you are good because of Christ? Well, it's like the Bible says, apart from him, you can do nothing. Yes. Here's the best part. Never apart from him. Right, Hebrews but, 13, 5 says he will never leave you nor forsake you. But Always that's not you being good, right? Well, I don't think that's what we're talking about. I'm not talking about being good. You were talking about there's a because something if, you're wrestling with that will never go away. I think there's, I think for, I was everybody, but perhaps not everybody, but a lot of people, like a lot, I mean, wrestles, right? Like, and, and whether it's anger or frustration and, or, or whether it's, whether it's, you know, it, Name, name one thing. Anger. Okay. You deal with anger? Um, I deal with, I deal with lack of patience and like I'm very, very impatient and I wrestle with that and I, I deal with, I don't like injustice. And so my natural response to injustice is anger. So not anger in the sense of like, I don't like randomly yell and yell, scream and get angry. But when I see something unjust, like my response is, is not in alignment with with scripture, right? Like not, and I don't like that. Right. And I'm like, I work on that and I, this, but yes, yes. When there's something that I see in just anger. Yes. Like that yeah. is not just. Yeah. God doesn't like that either. Mm-hmm. You and God are in alignment with that. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. But listen, you can be angry, but sin not. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. And you I know that, you know the difference. Yes, I do. Okay. But yeah. you do, you do sin. What do you mean? Because like, like what you cuss when I, you do it or something? Like what? Nah, I have no problem with cussing. I mean, in the right context or whatever, that's not a big deal. But like, no, like the the action, like I can be, like I can belittle people. I can be right people. Like I can make people feel, I can make people feel very small and insignificant. Like I can make people feel like worth, worthless, right? Yeah. And like, like this is something that like, you're never going to see it out. You know what I mean? Like you're never going to see, I'm not going to be walking down the hall and just like screaming at someone or whatever. But like, in my heart of heart, like in, in the deepest, darkest moments of things, like, like when I see things, like my response, like my internal response is I want to eliminate them. I, I want them to feel co- like complete worthlessness. And that response, that internal battle of like wanting that, I don't acting, I'm not acting on that 95% of the time. Right. But there have been times yeah. where I, like where I have caused say, significant damage that I've had to go back in and fix early on in my life. Right. Where I've like, like my actions and granted, you know, I might not have had the greatest relationship with Christ at the time, but like I was saved at the time, right? Where like my actions, like, like were not kind. I didn't physically abuse, you know, abuse or beat up anyone or whatever. But like my words, like it talks about in James where it's like death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yeah, 100%. And so that, that battle, that rage and like every day I think I grow and it becomes easier because I become more like Christ, but I don't ever expect the, my impatience to just go away. Right. Or like my, that, the, the, that, that battle to go away. I mean, I wish, but I don't think that's biblical because let me look at Paul. Okay. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you ever learn like the fruits of the spirit? Yeah. Well, isn't the fruit of the spirit? I mean, there's like seven of them. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's singular. But yeah, fruit, fruit something very. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Patience is one of those. Yeah. So the fruit of the spirit is saying. I mean, just think about it like a tree, right? The tree produces some fruit. Yeah. So the spirit, the Holy Spirit, yeah. does he live in you? Yeah. Is one of the fruits he produces patience? Yeah. According to the Bible, yes. Do you believe it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You've got it. I do. But also I wrestle with it. But you know when it changes? You know when you stop wrestling with it? When? When you make a decision. You know the definition of a decision. Yeah, but what about Paul, though? Okay. So you keep coming back to this. Yeah. I mean, he's very clear about it. Well, okay, then what's the next part of that verse? I mean, he talks about it several times. He says, it is a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me. He tells you exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay. So when you look at things like this and we walk around, see, like in business, I feel like you would deal with this. You would say, here's a characteristic trait I need to eliminate, develop, get rid of in order to be more successful. Yeah. But here in this Christian context, you're like, I just got to deal with it. There has been many times. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this. Yeah. There's been many times in your life, because there's been many times in my life that I struggled with things for years. And then I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then I asked God to help me with it. And then I found scriptures that back it up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make a change. And I can guarantee you, you've made those types of changes in your life to get to where you are today. Absolutely. You can do it with anything, especially if there's a Holy Spirit in you and one of the fruits he produces is the thing you're after. Would that imply then that you can become sinless? Or like you can stop sinning entirely? I think you can develop in it. I think you can get better every day. Right. Do you walk around, do you call yourself a sinner? I am a sinner saved by grace. So like I am not a sinner. I'm I'm no longer a slave. If the, the thing you're saying is, do I label myself as a sinner? I, without Christ, am a sinner in need of a savior. Yes. But now that I have Christ, I am a sinner saved by grace. So I am now sin free. So I'm not sure where you're going with that question, but without Christ, yes, I'm a sinner. With Christ, I am still a sinner, but I am saved. So I am cl- washed clean. Okay. See, I don't look at it like I'm a sinner anymore. I've sinned, but Jesus did his job. I've accepted it. He's in me. We hang out every day. I'm not a sinner. I'm a son. I have sinned, but I'm not a sinner. Interesting. I repent. I forget the past and I move forward. Okay. I work on stuff every day. I develop every day. Man, if there's areas in my life I need to develop in and it's promised in the word, let's go. Like, I like that. I like that sharpening. I mean, I like that attitude for sure. That word where it talks about, you know, he prunes us. You've heard this. This is those things where it's like, I have to cut something out of my life. And it hurts for a minute. It does. Yeah. But on the other side of that, you can flourish. Yeah. That thing gets lopped off and then you grow and produce more fruit. And so if you're looking at a thing where it's like, man, I struggle with patience. When we talk, when we talk generational curses, you know what typically happens? Typically hmm. the, the son, the daughter inherits with just just through not being intentional, yeah, yeah, inherits the words, the actions, and the behaviors of the father, grandfather, the parents. Yeah. You don't think about it. There's lots of things in me for me personally that I had to examine, yeah. acknowledge. Paul said, examine yourself to make sure you're in faith. Yep. So there's these areas where it's like, man, I'm saying the same words my dad said. I'm saying the same things my mom used to say about money. Yep. I remember yep. some of them. And I had to stop for a minute and get those things out of me. Yeah. So we start talking about like, oh yeah, just my family line. Just they're just a bunch. They like short fuses. Yeah. I'm Italian. You know how we are. Yeah. Well, stop. Yeah. No, that, You're a yeah, new yeah. creature. Creature in Christ it says old things have passed away. All things have become new. And so you take that responsibility, like you said earlier, and it's like I'm getting this junk out of me because what you described is not a behavior that benefits you, your family, God, or the cause. Yeah. So if you decide I'm going to deal with this for the rest of my life, you will. If you decide 
I'm getting this junk out. This does not honor God. Then I'm getting out. I'll just go. Yeah. Let's work on it. Okay. All right. We can go for hours and we will absolutely have a part two for this because we've got to, yeah, this is really good. I really, I really appreciate you sitting down. I really appreciate you being such an open book and, and sharing so openly. Um, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up here, where can people learn more about you, follow you, get connected with you? Yeah. You can go to increase You can also search Travis Peters on YouTube, Travis Peters on YouTube, increase ministries.com. We will link that down below. Uh, a couple rapid fire questions here, um, to wrap it up. You ready to rock and roll? Do it. This was a ton of fun. Like really good. I, so, I, I can talk about this stuff forever. Yeah. So. And where are you at? We'll have to do another one. Okay. Uh, first question. What's one bucket list item that you have not yet done yet in your life? I think I need to go scuba diving. I think so. Because it's the one thing that I'm like, oh, man, the ocean? Yeah, it's Some crazy, crazy stuff down there. Crazy I need to get over that. All right. All right. So that, that, that kind of answer, that's kind of a bucket list in a different way. All right. That's the first thing I thought of. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, what's one person you want to meet before you die? Yeah, I think it was you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So we're good now. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to go to the next question. All right. All right. Uh, one book. What do you think? One book, one book that every entrepreneur should read. Every entrepreneur should read. Yeah. I actually think it's the four hour work week. Four hour work week. All right. Uh, last question. Fast forward to the end of your life. You're on your deathbed. Mm. And every single person that you've touched and had an impact on, right? There's going to be a lot of them for you. They forget everything you've said. Everything's wiped clean. However, you get to leave them with one final message, truth, piece of advice that they will believe 100% and act act out accordingly uh, without any context or you know, thing. What is that message to them? Bro, these are the types of questions you prepare me ahead of time no, this for. Is, this is it. That's exactly why. That's exactly why <laughs> okay. we, do, we don't prepare. I got you. I got you. I'm just playing. Yeah. And the first thing that comes to my mind is what we talked about earlier. And those, those words of Jesus where he just said, you'll become what you've believed. So that, that puts the ball in your court. you become what you believed. All right. Travis Peters. Thank you, sir. Dude. Appreciate it. It was a great episode. Guys, we're going to end it there. Thanks for watching. Till next time. See you later. Peace. Bye.